I'm Chris Troy, host of St. Clair County Risa's Moment in History, and I'm standing on the former site of the Port Huron Engine and Thrasher Company. Now in 1851, a Battle Creek blacksmith by the name of William Brown undertook several custom blacksmithing and foundry jobs. Soon overwhelmed with the requests, Brown constructed a small building and hired a few men to help assist with the work, naming his facility the Upton Manufacturing Company. 24 years later, in 1875, a debate was taking place at a city council meeting in the town of Port Huron. The question of establishing a successful industry in the city had gone unanswered for several months, so it was finally decided the time had arrived to make a decision. The city council concluded that such an industry was vital to the growth of Port Huron and authorized a task force to secure good businesses overseen by Charles E. Harrington, one of the city's prominent citizens. Harrington, along with two associates, met several other citizens from Port Huron and received verbal commitments to invest capital into the proposed project. Knowing he had financial backing, Harrington proceeded to Battle Creek specifically to visit the Upton Manufacturing Company. Harrington and Brown apparently struck a bargain because three years later, the Upton Manufacturing Company was relocated in Port Huron. In 1889, the Upton Manufacturing Company employed 102 factory assemblers and machinists, 15 traveling salesmen, and eight office workers. Eventually, the majority of the stock of the company, which was owned by William Brown, was purchased, and the name of the company was changed to the Port Huron Steam Engine and Thrasher Company. During the 1890s, America experienced a depression, and at several occasions, the company was on the verge of financial ruin. What appeared to save the company from liquidation and receivership was a bicycling craze that had swept over America in the mid-1890s. The company recognized the necessity for road improvements and repair for bicyclists through the design and deployment of steamrollers and grow graders. The new line of machinery led to the meeting of the first International Good Roads Congress in Port Huron on July 4, 1900, where the company provided the equipment and staged a demonstration in road paving. The impressive demonstration made the company look good in the eyes of the Congress. More importantly, the sales of road machinery helped prop up the company. By 1915, steam was being replaced by the gasoline engine. And while the Port Huron Engine and Thrasher Company attempted to produce a gas-powered tractor, engineering and design flaws created many problems for the tractor to work properly, so very few were built, beginning the demise of the company. While the Port Huron Engine and Thrasher Company was known for their tractors, the company also produced products such as sawmills, corn shellers, hay press bales, and other machinery that kept American farmers hard at work in the 19th century. For Moment in History Extra, hey, I'm Chris Troy, reminding you all that history, well, it lives in all of us.